Let's have a sit down. Let's hear the most tragic event that has Ted on London twice to be exact twice. So sit down, grab some popcorn and relax. Great smog of London, lethal smog that covered the city of London for five days, December 5-9 in 1952, caused by a combination of industrial pollution and high-pressure weather conditions. This combination of smoke and fog brought the city to a near standstill and resulted in thousands of deaths. Its consequences prompted the passing of the Clean Air Act four years later, which marked a turning point in the history of environmentalism. The phenomenon of London fog long predated the crisis of the early 1950s. Known as peace supers for their dense, yellow appearance, such all-encompassing. Fogs had became a hallmark of London by the 19th century. But polluted fog was an issue in London as early as the 13th century, due to the burning of coal, and the situation only worsened as the city continued to expand. Complaints about smoke and pollution increased in the 1600s, when ultimately in... Effective legislation was passed under King James I to restrict coal burning. Rapidly increasing industrialization that began in the late 1700s made conditions even worse. These hazes were not natural formations of the atmosphere. Water vapor would stick to particulates released by coal burning factories, producing dark and heavy clouds that impaired visibility. This variety of fog later came to be known as smog, a merging of the words smoke and fog, a term invented. Air pollution reached a crisis in the 19th century with the spread of the Industrial Revolution and the rapid growth of the metropolis. The increase of domestic fires and factory furnaces meant that polluted emissions surged considerably. It was at this time that the fog-laden atmosphere of London portrayed vividly in the novels of Charles Dickens and Arthur Conan Doyle emerged. The fogs of London could last a week, and fog-related deaths were reported on gravestones in the early 19th century. Despite the deterioration of public health, little was done to check the smog, given the plethora of jobs that new industry provided and the comforts afforded by domestic coal fires. The Great Smog of 1952 was a peace super of unprecedented severity, induced by both weather and pollution. On the whole, during the 20th century, the fogs of London had become more infrequent as factories began to migrate outside the city. However, on December 5th, an anticyclone settled over London. A high-pressure weather system that caused an inversion whereby cold air was trapped below warm air higher up. Consequently, the emissions of factories and domestic fires could not be released into the atmosphere and remain trapped near ground level. The result was the worst pollution-based fog in the city's history. Visibility was so impaired in some parts of London that pedestrians were unable to see their own feet. Aside from the underground, transportation was severely restricted. Ambulance services suffered, leaving people to find their People simply abandoned their cars on the road. Indoor plays and concerts were cancelled as audiences were unable to see the stage, and crime on the streets increased. There was a spike in deaths and hospitalizations relating to pneumonia and bronchitis. And herds of cattle in Smithfield reportedly choked to death. Though the fog lasted five days, finally lifting on December 9th, its severity was not fully appreciated until the Registrar General published the number of fatalities a few weeks later, which amounted... <coughs> To about 4,000. The effects of the smog were long lasting, however, and present day estimates rank the number of deaths to have been about 12,000.
After the events of 1952, the seriousness of London's air pollution became undeniable. Slow to act at first, the British government ultimately passed the Clean Air Act four years later, in 1956, as a direct response to the lethal fog. The act established smoke-free areas throughout the city and rest. Ricted the burning of coal in domestic fires as well as in industrial furnaces. Moreover, homeowners were offered grants that would allow them to switch to different heating sources, such as oil, natural gas, and electricity. Though change was gradual and another smog crisis occurred in 1962, the Clean Air Act is generally considered a major event in the history of environmentalism, and it helped improve public health in Britain.